Good morning and welcome to Grace for Today. Blessings, everybody. God bless you. My prayers, the Lord has kept you safe and sound wherever you are and that the hand of God is resting upon you and that you're finding favor. You're getting witty ideas and inventions and God is ordering your steps. He's that kind of God. Yes, he is. He is that kind of God. I pray that the as my mom and me used to say, the Lord's choicest blessings would be yours. All right, so it's our time to get started. I'm going to give you all just a few moments, and um, we're going to get started with our study for today. Blessings to each of you. Thank you so much for joining. Good morning. I can't see everybody that's on because I was, you know, working with gadgets. But we are grateful for all that the Lord has done for you all, and we thank you for your time. Thank you so much for being consistent. I want to remind you, those of you who are in the Loosedale, Mississippi area, I will be there the first Sunday, Lord willing, first Sunday at 2 p.m. at um, New Testament Church of God in Christ, Pastor Solly Cowan. It will be a joy day honoring Lady Angie Cowan. Hope that you'll get a chance, if you're in the area, that you'll get a chance to join me. Good morning to everybody. Hey, y'all. Good morning and many fall blessings to you. Let's just get started. Y'all come on and catch the replay if you don't get it on the beginning. All right, so we've been talking about taking the land. And um, so here we are, the children of Israel. They're, we're in the book of Joshua. <laughs> Joshua, one of my favorite books in the Bible. And um, Joshua is talking to Caleb. And Caleb, good morning, everybody. Um, Joshua... Is, is Caleb is telling Joshua, listen, you remember what the Lord promised. You remember what God said. You remember I went and spied out the land and I spoke from my heart. It's about that heart, that heart being convinced and convicted to follow God's plan. Heart being convinced and convicted that no matter what the, what the atmosphere says, no matter what the community says, no matter what uh, circumstances say, we agree with God. Caleb says, you know, I spoke from my heart. My brethren, verse 8 is where we are. I want to go back there. Verse 8, nevertheless, my brethren that went up with me, they saw what I saw. They received what I received. Thank you for the hearts. I appreciate it. And they moved uh, in the area like I did. They saw, I saw what they saw. But what I saw was different than what they saw. Only because I factored God into my sight. In my line of sight, I saw the giants. I saw the sons of Anak. I saw the Canaanites, the Hivites, the Amalekites, and every other ite. But I saw God. It was the potential for God to intervene in something that was too big for me. You better catch that. I saw the opportunity for God to speak for me, to show himself strong. The scripture says the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth looking for. He's looking for someone, hey, Lady Janelle, to show himself strong on their behalf. He wants to show himself strong for us. He wants to move for you. He wants to intervene. What seems to be impossible even for you. Well, you may say, I don't feel like that. I don't think like that. Well, God wants to change what you see and what you feel and what you think. God wants to uh, work with you to bring your thoughts in and make them agreeable with his. Some things we're doing because we don't want to do it. We're doing because we don't, well, yeah, we're doing because we don't want to do what God says and we don't want to do what's right. Don't, they don't want to hear right. They want to hear comfortable. They want to hear what's pleasing. They want to hear what's, what's easy to do. It's easy to do nothing. It's easy to be mediocre and average and below average, but it's going to cost you something if you want to rise above. If you want to go where God is taking you, it's going to cost you something. It's going to cost you something. But honey, it's worth it. It's worth it to get the plan of God, the hand of God to work for you. Listen, let's read on. He says, um, my brethren that went up with me made the heart of the people melt. That word made, I want to give you. Good morning, Mother Fleming, Missionary Fleming. 
here, this word said, this word made, it means create, this is my definition, okay, that the Lord gave me, so um, this is not Webster's or anybody else, it's just mine, all right, um, so here, the word made means to create an environment or atmosphere, basically, but then it means uh, the atmosphere will produce, will produce after it's kind based on the seed. So they made the heart of the people melt. What they produced through what they saw, the atmosphere they created, it produced fear and doubt. It re re it produced after its kind, they just did not believe that they could go in there and take that promised land that they could possess their possessions listen if god has it for me he's going to give me grace to get it if god has it for me he's going to give me grace to receive it though i may have had negative reports i still believe that god will give me i believe his report. And what does his report say? His report says, I'm healed. His report says, I'm free. His report says, I'm delivered. His report says, I am, I am rich. That's what the Bible said, right? He says, let the weak say I'm strong. Let the poor say I'm rich. It's not just saying it. It's agreeing with what God says and God will order your steps. I was listening to the man of God this morning. I'm going to get to my lesson. I promise. I got eight minutes. All right. And he was talking about how God will order your steps. If he, when David, this is the example he gave. When David uh, and his men came back from fighting and found that their wives and their children and their stuff had been taken and the men were angry. I didn't understand it till the man of God said it this morning. He said, and David said, shall I pursue and shall I overtake? He wanted direction. He wanted to think in line. And that's why we ask God, because we want to think in line with, we want our thoughts to become agreeable to his, but we need to know what his thoughts are. We need to know, God, what's your, why, what, what's going on? What do I need to think? How do I need to pray? What should be my posture? David said, shall I pursue? Shall I go after my enemy that stole our stuff and our, our loved ones? And if I pursue, will I overtake them? God says, pursue and you will surely overtake them. Look at God. David didn't know where to go, what to do, but the scripture tells us that he ran into a young man. I believe it was a, I don't remember if it was a Philistine, whoever it was. He ran into a young man that hadn't eaten in two or three days. And he saved the young man. He fed him. He gave him water. He took care of him. And he explained. He explained they were looking for so-and-so. And the young man said, I know where they are. God orders our steps. We just need to know, God, what do you say I need to do? As I'm going, you'll put people in my path. As I'm obeying you, you will give me divine connections. We just need to obey him. We just need to know, God, what are you saying? You said, love my enemies. Lord, help me to be able to do it. Help me to love those who love me less. Help me to love those who love you less. Help me just to love them to you. Help me to follow you and to obey your word so that you order my steps into my next. You order my steps into what you have for me, for my divine connections. You put people in my path to give me direction. They don't even know it. They don't even know it. But I know that he's, the scripture says, I'm going to talk about this coming up soon. Even when the widow of Zarephath, when the man of God went there, the Lord told him, go to Zarephath. I've commended a widow to feed you there. The widow didn't have a direct line to God where God said, I'm sending the prophet to you. He, none of that. But she was ready to obey what, listen, you need to be ready to obey. You need to be ready to follow. You need to be ready to so say, Lord, let your will be done. I trust you. I don't know how you're going to do it. I just trust you. I'm not going to fret. I'm not going to worry. I'm not going to be anxious because you said, fret not yourself or because of evildoers who prosper in the way. For they will soon be cut down. So 
create the word made is to create and I got, oh my God, I got time. Good. We're doing good to create an atmosphere that produces after its kind. So we want to create an atmosphere that will produce faith, that will produce joy. The Lord told me some years ago, I'm still working on it. Praise the Lord to cultivate the fruit of joy, cultivate it. Not just laughing without a purpose, but joy is a deep-seated contentment that produces uh, uh, an expression of peace and uh, utter enthusiasm. Not this, I mean, I'm not a bubbly kind of person in the sense that I'm not, I'm going to be laughing about everything, but there is a joy that comes from the Spirit of God that no matter what's going on, you are content, you are at ease, you have the peace of God. That was me. I'm just telling you about me. He says that the brethren that went up with, with me created an atmosphere that caused the heart of the people to melt. Oh, the definition. Okay. Uh, the word made, I guess I could, well, I didn't type it up. It's to create an atmosphere that produces after its kind. Based on the seed. It's like anything. We plant an apple tree. What are you expecting? Apples. You plant uh, collard greens. I don't, they come in a seed, don't they? Oh, no. Uh, you expect collard greens. So when we make something, we create an atmosphere that will produce whatever that seed was. That will produce whatever we sowed, whatever we're speaking. Uh, that's why Jeremiah says, my eyes affect my heart. We need to guard our heart, what we allow in there. We need to be sure that what we're saying, even in jest, even in playing, that we are not saying things that are contradictory to the word of God. There's a phrase, and I'll say it, I think my sister's listening, but uh, that, that people use often when they don't know, um, they don't have solution. And uh, the phrase is, um, it is what it is. I understand it, but somehow in me, when I hear those words, it's almost like, I don't know what else to say or do, so I'm just going to do or say, well, this is just whatever it is. No, I'm going to factor God in there. And I'm going to say, God, you tell me what it is. Because he sees beyond this moment. He sees beyond this situation. I may be frustrated and filled with anxiety because I don't know. And I don't know. I am not omniscient. I am not all-knowing. But I know the one who is. And he walks with me. And he talks with me. And he tells me. You belong to me, girl. You belong. My name is on you. I'm going to work this out for you. I'm going to fix this for you. Let me read on. He says, and what they did, the words they spoke, the environment, the atmosphere they produced um, made the heart of the people melt. Melt means to lose strength, to drain, to deplete, to burst their bubble. That's good right there. The, what they said gave them no hope of God moving for them. He says, but I, holy, W-H-O-L-L-Y, I completely, utterly, with all of my heart, followed the Lord my God. That's what I did. I followed God. Whatever God said, I agreed with it. And sometimes we don't know. And there are times I've not known, bless God. But I knew right and wrong. And if I didn't know what happens right now, I knew the last word he gave me. I knew the last word he gave me. I knew the last word he gave me. And I obeyed that. There are some things that are not negotiable. I know he called me to certain tasks, to certain things. And when that season is up, there will be an unrest in me. And I'm looking for him to open the door. I'm looking for him to speak. I'm expecting. That's the word. Verse 9. I know my time is gone. Tomorrow I guess I'll pick up verse 9. Verse 8 is where I need to get to today. But I saw I'm a little behind. I'm just a little behind. Um, so. We'll pick it up tomorrow. Verse 9. And maybe I'll come on a little bit earlier. I'm going to see. I'm going to see. I'm going to see. All right. All right, so, uh, but you got that, right? 
We should a lot when when you see um, they, they have this saying now. I gotta go. Uh, when love is not being served, you can get up from the table. Where peace is not being served, where there's a pattern. We need to, I'm not saying you walk out your marriage, beloved. That ain't what I'm talking about. Go get some good godly counsel and you seek the Lord. I'm not talking about that. I'm just saying we should expect God to intervene. We should be looking for him to give us direction. I don't want to move if he's not moving. I don't want to go if he's not going. I want to stay right smack dab in the middle of the lion's den if that's where I should be so I can see the power of God. I want to stay right there in the fiery furnace so I can see the fight, so I can see the hand of God. So God will move for me. I want to stay right there and fight the lion and the bear so that I can get victory and see what God is going to do. So that God will make my enemies. It doesn't matter who they are and what name they have. He will make my enemies my footstool. That's what he said. You know I believe what he said. Not that I want my enemies to, to be in pain, but I want God's will to be done. And if they are circumventing and keeping me from getting to my mountain, then God will make them my footstool. What does a footstool do? You've heard me say it. It helps me to step up a little bit higher. And God will cause you to step up just a little bit higher because you keep the faith. Keep it. Hallelujah, and praise our great God. Let me pray. I got to go. All right, so Father, thank you so much for this day and for this time. I pray for your sons and daughters. Guard our hearts. Give us songs during the day. Give us reminders. Wash our mouths that we don't use profanity and cuss and say all sorts of derogatory things that are contrary to faith. Open our eyes. Help us to see and to discern. Help us to see and to discern where the little foxes are coming in to destroy our vine. What we produce. The atmosphere and the environment we should produce in. And we thank you for it. Be our healer today. Give us speedy recovery. Strengthen the bones and the nerves and the tissues. Let them function as you designed them to. Let blessings chase us down and overtake us. And we'll give you honor. We thank you for every testimony that's coming because of your hand being upon us. Cover your sons and daughters now in the name of Jesus and we'll give you praise. Cover us and help us to be a light in this dark world. In Jesus name we pray. So it is. Amen. All right. Got to go. Y'all got to go. Listen, join me in the morning. Uh, don't forget to share the video. Type in catch the replay. We're a little low on sharing, but if everybody who watches will share uh, to their page or to them to messenger would be great uh, and allow the Lord to speak to somebody. We need to be strong in the Lord. Encourage someone else. They need the word of God. We need the word of God. We need the word of God. All right. I do appreciate the hearts. It matters. Thank you for that. I think it's my brother. I can't tell. But God bless each and every one of you. Listen, uh, I'm sharing the video. Type in, catch the replay, hashtag graced for today. And uh, I'll upload it to YouTube momentarily. Don't forget, first Sunday in April, I will be in Loosedale, Mississippi at 2 p.m. Hope somebody's going with me. I hadn't talked to my, my riding partners yet. But um, 2 p.m., Loosedale, New Testament Church of God in Christ. I'll try to live stream as well. I pray that you'll join me uh, then if you can. But if not, join me in the morning at 7.15 a.m. Central Time. Until then, remember this. Time spent in the word of God is never wasted and you have been graced for today. Have a great day, everybody. Peace.